At 5 feet 9 and 200 pounds, the average male is twice as likely to have high blood pressure and over four times as likely to have diabetes compared to lighter weight men his height, according to current body mass index research from Europe. With the normal rate of weight loss, it would take 16 to 31 weeks for him to reach the low risk weight range, but most men don't want a small body. Surveys and studies show they want to be big, muscular, and lean. Aesthetics aside, is this the best option for our health? If the average male would put in the years of hard work needed for his ideal physique, he'd have health advantages from excellent fitness and from a waist that's eight and a half inches smaller than the average man. Weight loss takes a big commitment, but training for the ideal physique requires a new lifestyle. Speaking of ideals, the average US woman at five foot four would prefer to be 115 pounds lean and fit with a 23-inch waist and 36-inch hips. At 173, with a 39-inch waist, she's 58 pounds and 16 inches from her ideal shape, though the weight loss she needs to lower her health risks is like the average man. Comparing with the ideal can create tension as we see the gap between where we are today and what we may want for ourselves. Are our goals on the right track, or should we pause and rethink our drive for perfection? Seeing beauty in all forms of the human body is good for our perspective, but how can we find the goals we can commit to achieving? Looking at the health advantages of different sizes and weight groups can help you zero in on what you want for yourself. Research on Body Mass Index, or BMI, has a lot to offer regarding the health advantages of body weight. Lower risks of death, disease, disability, and chronic conditions have been consistently linked to a lower weight class. The studies have limits, however, because they don't account for individual differences in muscle mass. Going strictly by BMI, a lightweight inactive person would be at a lower risk than a heavier but muscular and active peer. To take full advantage of the research, we need waist and hip measurements to confirm where we're carrying our weight. If your waist is almost as big as your hips, you have excess body fat in your midsection. This measurement confirms the significance of health risks due to extra body weight. If your waist is small compared to your hips, it makes BMI less of a factor, as long as your waist is also less than half your height. Use flexible tape when you measure your waist. Stand upright and maintain normal tension in your waistline. Don't try to suck your waist in or let your belly hang out. Measure yourself at the level of your navel, turning to the side to ensure the tape is horizontal all the way around. The tape should fit evenly, contacting the skin around your midsection without pinching. When you measure your hips, run the tape around the widest part of your hips. This should be near the mid-buttocks. The tape should run horizontally and fit evenly, contacting the skin around your hips or your garment without pinching. For the most accurate results, measure yourself in no more than one thin layer of clothing. Repeat two or three times to make sure you have the correct measurement. Look up your hip measurement in the left column and then scan to the right to find the nearest point to your waist circumference. Risk levels for cardiovascular disease and death are at the top. The average US female is on the border of the highest risk class for this test. Men can also find their hip measurements in the left column. Scan to the right for your waist. Once we confirm a genuine need for weight loss, we can use BMI research to set meaningful goals to improve our health and quality of life. About two-thirds of people in Western countries are at a higher risk of health problems or dying prematurely due to their weight. A higher risk is not a guarantee of future health problems, but it is worth considering. The upcoming body mass index charts are based on studies of hundreds of thousands to millions of people with long-term follow-up to gauge health outcomes. Research shows increasing risk as you go further from the target weight in the green zone. For people in the dark red weight class, it's two times the risk and above. The women's chart is first. Find your height on the left side of the chart. Scan to the right to find your weight on that row. The star is at the US average. The men's chart is arranged the same way. The average man is also at a 50% elevated risk based on his weight. The many health advantages of weight loss can keep us motivated on the road to our ultimate fitness goals. Women can notably lower their risk of chronic conditions, disease, and disability in a matter of weeks. For the average woman, the first major step is only 22 pounds away. Depending on your height, 
17 to 28 pounds of weight loss are associated with much lower risks of diabetes, sleep disorders, and heart failure. With more progress, high blood pressure, asthma, and arthritis risks are impacted. Look up your height and weight on this chart to compare. The risk of death, disability, back pain, and chronic pain becomes lower with 9 to 15 more pounds lost. This weight range also makes women more likely to be successful in having children. Every step in the process is valuable. If the average woman goes the other way and gains weight, she's more likely to have an undesirable outcome. 15 to 25 pounds above the average weight is associated with much higher risks of diabetes, sleep disorders, and heart failure. There's also a moderate increase in many other chronic conditions. 38% of women in this category have some form of physical disability. By comparison, about 24% of overweight women have a disability. What would be a good, doable first step toward better health in your case? To be fair with this data, you could point out that the majority of women with obesity do not have a disability. Certain conditions may be more likely at a heavier weight class, but there are no guaranteed health problems or benefits for any particular person. Hopefully this information helps you weigh the risks and benefits and decide whether it's worth it to make a change. If you're getting value from this video so far, please comment below and smash those like and subscribe buttons. Healthy weight loss includes improvements in waist measurement, fitness, and muscle performance. We'll cover the details in upcoming videos. In the meantime, let's look at the comparable health advantages of weight loss for men. At 14 to 22 pounds lighter, the average man reaches a weight class associated with significantly lower risks of sleep disorders, diabetes, and heart failure. Arthritis, asthma, and high blood pressure become much less likely with another step of progress. Look up your height and weight on this chart to compare. With six to nine additional pounds lost, the average man reaches a weight class with a much lower risk of disability, back pain, death, and chronic pain. This is also the weight range for the best all-around athleticism for the average height man. On the other hand, if the average male goes the other way and gains 23 to 34 pounds, he will join a class of BMI associated with high risks of diabetes, sleep disorder, heart failure, and arthritis. He'd also have a moderate increase in the risk of high blood pressure, asthma, back pain, and chronic pain compared to the average weight. 25% of men in this weight category have a physical disability, compared to 16% of overweight men. Are you comfortable with your position on this chart, or are you looking to make a change? Good health and a more aesthetic look aren't the only things to consider when it comes to your body size. If you want to unlock your athletic potential in your favorite sports and activities, it may help to know how close you are to the weight range of the greatest athletes. More than 80% of top female athletes fit within a narrow weight range, a BMI of about 19 to 22, which at 5'4 is 110 to 128 pounds. Elite male athletes are more broad-based with their weight distribution, but the middle two-thirds have a BMI of 21 to 26.4, which at 5'9 is 142 to 179 pounds. Elite fitness levels mostly outweigh any health risks associated with overweight in these top performers. Research has revealed a cutoff point, however, even for elite athletes. A Harvard study showed that pro football players had over two times the risk of death from cardiovascular disease as their lighter weight peers in pro baseball. The NFL has partnered with wellness and heart health programs to help former players lose weight. We've covered a lot of territory in this video, but one more factor to consider is your weight history, the number of years you've been overweight. People with optimal weight today, who used to be overweight, have higher health risks than people who are never overweight. They're still much better off than people who remain overweight. So if you need to lose weight, the best time to do it is as soon as possible. This was episode three from our masterclass series, Fit for Your Life. We're covering tools for getting the health benefits you need from the lifestyle you enjoy. Please share in the comments below about your health and fitness goals for this year. And check out the other episodes if you haven't seen them yet. In the meantime, subscribe to this channel then you won't miss any upcoming videos on health, exercise, and fitness. See you next time.